Hello, beautiful people. So these are words that I have consciously tried to stop using and also practices that I have consciously tried and I'm still trying to stop actually doing. So we all know the power of words is how we communicate, is how the people around us understand us and understand exactly what's going on and what's trying to be conveyed and vice versa, how information is you know, interpreted by us as well. So indeed, words do matter. Their understanding by that person also matters because you can say one thing here and then you can say it in another country and it's, it's seen as vulgar. So it just also depends on the interpretation um, and if that person understands what you're saying anyway, because that's another thing. If someone doesn't even understand what you're saying in the first place, then those words don't really have any power over them necessarily. So it just depends on, on your understanding and where you are and how deep things go. But, you know, if you have uh, words or spells that are being said over you or things like that, and you're way above that level of thinking and you're you're beyond that then you also have the power to reverse what has been said over you so i'm going to also show you some videos that i came across that i found quite interesting in you know the viewpoints of of others as far as some of the words that we use and things that we can kind of stop saying and and the origin of words but for me personally some things that i have tried to stop doing is the first one is using he as the pronoun for God because he is just, I know it's just a general term and, and it's supposed to encompass male and female or masculine and, and feminine. However, because I know that he is more than what we could ever imagine and see, I'm saying he again because it's just been so subconsciously ingrained in us to say he but I know that the higher power that the creator is so much more than we could ever imagine I'm trying to get the creator out of that box of just being considered a, a, a man or a male you understand uh, so like I that's the first thing I'm trying to get from using the he pronoun all the time for our higher power the second one is just the word God in itself. I have consciously stopped using God um, because God is a title like president and CEO. There are, many there are many different gods. So that's not a name, it's a title. So I try to be more specific about the actual God that I am talking about because there are many. Now, the other one is, is, and the third is the, the name Jesus. Because I know the history of the name Jesus, I know that it's, it wasn't the person's name that I am referring to, then I refer to that person as the name I have come to understand it to originally be. Another thing I have stopped saying consciously, uh, I, I always catch myself when I say this, is good morning. Because it's an oxymoron, it contradicts each other. Uh, to say good morning, it doesn't matter how it's spelled or whatever the case may be, which is spelled the same, but I don't want to have good morning. I'm not in mourning. I want to be out of mourning. I don't ever want to mourn or be sad, even though I know it's a part of life. But if I'm not in mourning, I don't want to have a, a, a good morning. And I don't want to say good morning to anyone else. So for the past year or even year and a half, I have been saying good day. That has been my greeting. Good day. How are you? Some people even say grand rising, you know, whatever the case may be. But it's just that good morning. It kind of, you know, cancels out each other. And now that I'm conscious of it, that's something I ha I've stopped doing. Um, the other one is pray. <laughs> it's it's really hard to find another term to say that's as short to the point and understood as the word pray. But instead of saying, you know, I'll pray or I'll, I'll pray for you or anything like that, you know, I say I'll petition the most high for you. I'll most definitely be speaking for, you know, a positive outcome for you, you know, or the will of the creator 
over you. It's a longer way and longer version of saying it, but it's for me, it's better than pray because I, even though I know it's spelled differently, it's, it, it, it's just the wording of it and the fact that it could have a double meaning. And that's the thing about English is that so many words can have a double meaning and opposite meaning, depending on how you use it, when you use it, where you use it. And it has a different spelling. Some words have different origins, even though they may sound the same. It's just, it's just really a complicated, a complicated um, language. And I have heard some people even say that English is one of the hardest ones to learn and to grasp. And um, the last thing is the fact that I, I try not to promise people anything. I do not like to promise anyone anything. This is not a particular word. This is, like I said, one of the practices that I'm trying to stop doing. And it, it's, because, it's because if I promise someone something and I end up not being able to do it, then effectively I have lied. I've lied to them because I promised them you know, a promise is I am going to do this. It is going to get done. You can count on it. You can bet it, bet on it. But if I tell them something that I'm going to do without a doubt, it's going to happen. And then I am not able to do it. Then I, I have told the untruth. So I do not like to tell promises to people. The words that I use instead is I will do my best. I will try. Um, I will see what happens, you know. It's my intentions to do it, but if not, I will let you know, things like that. Sometimes you have to add a little bit more wording in it, it's more drawn out, but you have to make it very clear of your intentions and what it is you know, you're trying to convey and what you're trying to say to people. Another thing that I wanted to add is not only do you have to be conscious of what it is you're saying, you have to be conscious of what it is you're accepting other people saying over you. If people are speaking negatively over me or if they're saying something that I do not want, something that is negative, I either go ahead and I rebuke it or I say, I cast that down. I do not accept that. And I either say it loudly out to that person or I say it loudly out into the atmosphere where it can be said or I say it to myself so that I am not accepting those words or those phrases over myself or over my life as well. So again, be conscious of what it is you're putting out and be also very conscious of what it is you're accepting over you. So yeah, that's just my few cents about, you know, words that I'm trying to stop using and actual practices that I'm trying to stop doing um, because words do have meaning and you also want your words to match your actions and your actions to match your words So also I'm going to show you these couple of videos and you all just tell me what you think Tell me some phrases or things that you've stopped saying and why and thank you all for watching Seven words Rastaman Naya Bingi man Bingi man Bobo man Twelve tribe man Ancient man Children say Linguistic language latitude word song is power so be careful of words that you say because they can bring spells to you and to your family linguistic language latitude meditation of jamaican i rastafari i and i in belief number one we greet ones and say hello hell is low why we can't say greetings or my beloved, beloved, bless it. Number two, appreciate. In the same word song, you have heat. Why can't we say appreciate love or love for Keith? Appreciate love, love for Keith, not appreciate. Number three, morning. In the same word, why can't we say morning? Why we say morning? We are mourning for someone dead. We must say grand rising. Grand rising. Number four, dedicate. In the same word, you hear the pronunciation dead. And we want to create something where we can enlighten or uplift one. So we say, libicate. Or I as I dedicate. Libicate. Not dedicate. Five, oppress. In the same word song, word song like you pee up. But at the same time, create a word song as don't press. We say don't press, like Peter Zashe, 
don't press a man, right? Six words, sincere, sincerely. In the same word song, you hear the word sin. I sincerely, or I sincerely, instead of sincerely, sincerely, or I sincerely. Number seven, understand. Right? We always have to be under. Negative, under. We must say over or overstand, over or innerstand or iverstand. Seven words. A rasta man, rasta woman, rasta family shouldn't say within their surrounding linguistic language latitude. So tune in to Lion Eye View TV. Subscribe and share. Give thanks for the listeners, for those that tune in from this day forth and forevermore. Yeah? So what do I mean by the secret spells of the English language? Well, let me share with you what I call our premier life sentence. And it goes something like this. We awake each morning and go off during the weekdays to earn the living at various jobs and undertakings until we come to the weekend. And this seems perfectly acceptable to most people. However, more people die between six and nine on a Monday morning than any other time of the week. So I do what I call a translation of the English language and I spell that T-R-A-N-C-E with the idea that words cast spells. So when you translate that life sentence, you remember that a wake is a funeral party for the dead. Mourning is the state you're in when you attend a wake. And you would have to be in a week days to earn the living, since urns are for the ashes of the dead. We call our jobs undertakings. Job itself is a Hebrew word for persecuted. And what we get at the end of this perverse bargain with life is the weak end of the deal as we become progressively weakened ourselves. And so our most prevalent greeting to each other is hello, the reverse of which is, oh, hell. And at first, I suspected the hands of collusion entangling the language to foster illusion. And I think it's quite true that a culture's theology has a great deal to do with the word's etymology and how it evolves over time to combine incompatible meanings that may undermine the original thoughts it was meant to define. But now, I don't think it's planned. For the thing that I've found is that like concepts can gravitate toward the same sound and vibrate at the rate that our thoughts designate. Because words are electromagnetic vibrations whose fine alphabetic tintinabulations can take on the tint of our true expectations, which they then imprint on our metal of mind, causing sounds to adhere when they're of the same kind. 